So Kevin McCarthy, Jim Jordan, and three other members of Congress have been subpoenaed by Congress to testify about the crimes of Donald Trump. What do they risk if they defy those subpoenas, refuse to testify, and continue to cover up the crimes of Donald Trump? Let's talk about that, because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So Kevin McCarthy has very likely already committed federal felony offenses by covering up the crimes of Donald Trump. I did a recent Justice Matters video setting out precisely how that is, and the Huffington Post did a piece about it. Here's the headline. Jail time. Ex-prosecutor names the law Kevin McCarthy should be worried about. And the article quotes me accurately as saying, so many crimes to choose from, but one stands out. And I want to talk about that one crime in a little bit more detail today. It's called misprision of a felony. And let's put a little bit more meat on the bones because this issue, you know, it, it should be a dog with a bone issue. None of us should let go of this issue until Kevin McCarthy, Jim Jordan, and the other members of Congress are held accountable for covering up the crimes of Donald Trump. So first of all, let's talk about this crime, misprision of a felony. It's an unusual word, right? But it's a basic crime. It's a simple crime. And here is all it takes to commit the federal felony offense of misprision. Whoever, having knowledge of the commission of a felony, cognizable by a court of the United States, conceals and does not report or make known that crime to the appropriate authorities, shall be imprisoned for not more than three years. Now, friends, just a few weeks ago, a federal judge sitting in a court of the United States ruled that Donald Trump committed federal felony crimes, two of them, together with John Eastman. Judge David Carter, out in the Central District of California handed down a ruling that there is enough evidence by a preponderance of the evidence, 51% of the evidence, more likely than not, which is a higher evidentiary standard than is required to arrest and indict someone. Judge Carter ruled that Donald Trump committed two federal felony offenses. So a court of the United States has already cognized the fact that Donald Trump committed felony crimes. Yes, cognized is a word. It's the past tense, but I had to look it up. So what Judge David Carter ruled satisfies that element of the crime of misprision of a felony. So follow this, friends. Let's follow the bouncing ball of justice. Previously, Kevin McCarthy was asked by the January 6th committee investigating the Capitol attack to come in and testify voluntarily, provide evidence and information that you have about Donald Trump's crimes. And Kevin McCarthy said, nope, not going to do it. Well, now the legal landscape has changed. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's say he last said no to Congress before Judge David Carter ruled, cognized, I like that word, the word for the day, that Donald Trump committed federal felony crimes. And now Kevin McCarthy and Jim Jordan and others have been subpoenaed to provide that incriminating information about Donald Trump's crimes. Think about this. If they say no, after that federal judge has ruled, after a court of the United States has cognized Donald Trump's crimes, if they say no, well, that is a continued cover-up. If they defy a subpoena, then that's actually committing a crime, contempt of Congress in their zeal to conceal Donald Trump's crimes, and that will be the crime of misprision of a felony. 
And let's add some more facts, friends. Remember when Donald Trump was caught telling some of his Justice Department officials, I don't care if there was no election fraud, just say there was and leave the rest to me and my allies in Congress. You remember the reporting? This from the New York Times. Trump pressed Justice Department to declare election results corrupt, notes show, and Donald Trump was quoted as saying, leave the rest to me and to congressional allies. The former president is said to have told top law enforcement officials. Well, guess what? If Kevin McCarthy, Jim Jordan, and the other members of Congress defy the subpoenas in their zeal to conceal, refuse to testify, continue to cover up the crimes of Donald Trump, won't it seem like they are precisely those corrupt congressional allies that Donald Trump was talking about? And let's add one final wrinkle. If Kevin McCarthy defies the subpoena, yes, in his zeal to conceal, he will be concealing not only the crimes of Donald Trump, but he also very likely will be concealing evidence of Donald Trump's corrupt intent. Why do I say that? Well, remember when Kevin McCarthy was caught on that recorded phone call talking to Liz Cheney, saying, I'm going to tell the president to resign, but, you know, I'm afraid he's going to bring up the Pence pardoning thing. Remember that call? Here's how it was reported. Why McCarthy's reference to a possible Pence pardon stands out. McCarthy said, now, this is one personal fear I have. I do not want to get in any conversation about Pence pardoning. Again, the only discussion I would have with Trump is that I think this impeachment resolution will pass and it would be my recommendation that you should resign. And can I add a footnote here, friends? Remember Kevin McCarthy, before that recorded call was disclosed, swore up and down, told the American people, I never said I was going to tell Trump to resign. Yeah, we've got the recorded call, Kevin. Boy, are your pants on fire, sport. How sad is it that these are our elected officials? Weaklings like Kevin McCarthy, bald-faced liar to the American people, supporter and enabler of a criminal president like Donald Trump. How sad. But I digress. When in that recorded call with Liz Cheney, Kevin McCarthy said, I just don't want Trump bringing up the Pence pardoning thing. Do you think Kevin McCarthy just pulled that out of thin air? It sure sounds like Trump had been maybe even obsessing about the Pence pardoning thing, needing a pardon from Pence. What does that tell you? It tells you that Donald Trump has a guilty conscience all day long because he knows he's committed crimes and he knows that if he resigns, he needs a pardon from Pence, who would become president in the event Trump resigned while in office. So Kevin McCarthy undoubtedly has evidence not only of Donald Trump's crimes, but of his guilty knowledge, his corrupt intent, his criminal mens rea. And that's why if Kevin McCarthy, Jim Jordan, and the other Donald Trump lackeys and lap lapdogs in Congress defy these subpoenas in their zeal to conceal Donald Trump's crimes, they will be guilty of misprision of a felony and perhaps other offenses. And all that will be left is for them to be indicted by the grand jury and prosecuted for their crimes, their crimes against the United States, their crimes against we the people, their crimes that in a very real sense run the risk of destroying our democracy. And this is not some kind of a, a, a prosecutorial overreach. This is just good law enforcement. This is Prosecution 101. You know, it's supporting and defending the Constitution, not trying to destroy it. And this is what should be done if these 
men continue to lie in their zeal to conceal Donald Trump's crimes. Charge them with the crimes they're committing because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.